All right, let's uh, look at this problem. Determine the force in members E, I, and J, I of the truss shown. Indicate whether the members are in tension or compression. So we want to know the force inside member E, I right here, and the force inside member J, I right here. Now, obviously we're in the method of sections, uh, you know, section uh, of this chapter. So I know I'm going to do method of sections, but even if you didn't know, uh, don't you see why this would be a good uh, opportunity to use method of sections uh, because it's kind of big. If we did joints, we'd, we'd have to go to quite a few, you know, we'd have to jump through a few different joints. So method of sections might be a good technique to do. Can we, how would we cut this? Actually, sorry, before I cut it, let me go ahead and look at the whole free body diagram. Uh, and let me solve for AY and AX. Let me solve for GY right here. All right, how about that? Let's sum the forces in the X direction. AX, and that's it. So AX is equal to zero. Okay, summing the forces in the Y direction. AY minus 4,000 minus 8,000 minus 5,000 plus GY is equal to zero. Then let me sum the moments. I can sum the moments about any point. I think it makes most sense to sum the moments about point A. Uh, so summing the moments about A, if A is my pivot point, A goes straight, AX goes straight through it, AY goes straight through it. Uh, 4,000, its moment arm is 9 feet away, creating a negative moment. Uh, 8,000, its moment arm would be 18 feet away, creating a negative moment. 5,000, its moment arm would be 9, 9, 9, let's see. 45 feet away, creating a negative moment. But then GY would create a positive moment, 9, let's see, times 6, 54 feet away. Set those equal to 0, and I would get GY, 7,500 pounds. Plug that in up here. AY, uh, 9,500 pounds. All right, so AX is 0, AY, 9,500, GY, 7,500. Now, uh, sometimes you don't have to do that, uh, but many times that's, that's kind of the first step. Uh, that you need to do is to look at the whole free body diagram uh, and solve. All right, so now I want to use the method of sections because it's a large beam and I want to look at one of the kind of the interior uh, members. Uh, I identify which ones I want to look at this uh, EI and JI. And so, how could I cut this? How could I cut this? I've got to make a cut to separate one half from the other. How about right there? Right, what if I cut that right here? And which side do you want to keep? I think I'm I like to kind of keep the simpler side, you know? I think I'm gonna keep the right half of it. You you could cut it and keep the left half of it, and we would get the same answers. So I'm gonna uh, cut it right here and keep so these that I'm cutting through, I'm I'm gonna expose those uh members. Alright, so let me cut I mean, let me draw this section right here of F, G, H, I, right? Let me draw that section. Draw it right here. All right, so I'm drawing that section. Uh, and I cut through E, F, so I've got force in E, F. I cut through E, I, so I've got force in E, I. And I cut through... J-I, so I've got the force in J-I. Now, I still have the 5,000 pound force. I still have right here the 7,500 pound force. And you see why I needed to have solved for that 7,500 uh, so that when I cut it, my three unknowns, you know, I know everything else except for the three forces that I cut through, the three members that I cut through. You see that I chose, I am guessing tension for all three of those forces. It may not be. Um, you just have to guess one way. I always like to guess tension first. Uh, and then if my answer comes out negative, I guess wrong. It was actually in compression. So here's, here's my section right here. And I can sum the forces in X, sum the forces in Y, sum the forces in, uh, sum the moments. Um, all right, so let me sum the forces in the x direction. Negative F, J, I. Why is that negative? It's negative because these equations um, just uh, depend on what axes I choose. And so I think I'm going to choose my, my standard X, Y. So negative F, 
J, and negative F E F, I think that's it. That equals zero. Uh, let me sum the forces in the y direction. F E I, uh, negative 5,000, uh, positive 7,500. Okay, there. I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy when I see one equation with one unknown because then I can solve F E I would be negative, now be careful, right? set that equal to zero, this would be negative 2,500 pounds. So what do I need to do? I need to say FEI is 2,500 pounds compression and, and, and box that in. Was that one of the things that, yeah, that's one of the things that it asked for. All right, box that in. All right, now let me sum the moments. Let me sum the moments. Um... I could sum moments about any point, right? Maybe I could sum moments about here, 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 here. You could actually sum the moments about a point, like maybe here, that is off of your section, all right? Um, so you could be real strategic about what point you want to sum your moments about um, because, uh, you know, if you sum, if you take... The moment's about a point that a lot of these unknowns go straight through that point, then you don't have to include them in your moment equation. Uh, but uh, I think maybe summing the uh, moments about I might make sense. It, it may have been easiest, the math might have worked easiest if I sum the moments about this point E, which was kind of off of the um, object. Uh, but uh, anyway, I can sum my moments about any point We'll get the same answer. I'm going to sum moments about I. All right, so I is my pivot point right here. Uh, EI goes straight through it. JI goes straight through it. Uh, but FEF, the force in EF, uh, has a moment arm. I didn't draw this. I really probably should have. This is 12 feet tall and 9 and 9 right there. All right, so FEF is 12 feet, creating a positive moment. Uh, that 5,000... Uh, was, I didn't draw this great, but it was nine feet away, creating a negative moment. And then this 7,500 was 18 away, creating a positive moment. I think that's it. Sum those equal to zero. It's really great if you have a moment equation that only has one unknown, right? Choose a point that two of the unknowns go through so you can always solve for that third unknown. So I would get F, E, F is negative 7,500, so that means FEF is 7,500 pounds uh, compression. It didn't really ask for that one, but I'm going to solve that one because I cut through it. Now, I'm going backwards to this equation right here. Uh, remember, I need to choose the, uh, if I'm going backwards to an equation I've already written, because, because I already wrote that equation kind of the wrong way, I need to plug in that negative 7,500. Now, be careful here. This is minus negative 7,500, right? Minus negative 7,500. Be careful there. And don't make mistakes with the negatives or the math. I would get FJI is positive 7,500. What does that positive mean? That positive means I chose correctly. I guessed correctly. I always guess tension. So positive means tension the way that I work out these problems. And there we go. That's, that, that's the answer. That's the answer. Let's take a step back and look at what we did. We looked at the, so we decided we wanted to do method of sections. So whether I do method of joints or method of sections, um, I probably want to look at the whole free body diagram to begin with. Now, uh, I solved that AY was 9,500 and AX was zero. Did I actually have to do that? No, because I threw this half away. You know, if you think ahead, think a few steps ahead, then you might not have to do all of your free body diagram. Maybe you could think ahead and just say, hey, let me just solve for GY. How can I solve for GY? From the whole free body diagram, uh, you can sum the moments about A in order to get that GY, and then you could have stopped right there, knowing, hey, I'm, I'm only going to keep the right half. I don't really care what's happening at AX and AY. All right, so the more comfortable you are doing these, the more you don't have to stick with a strict uh, process of always do one, always do two, always do three. But, you know, if you always do the same process, you know, you have a few more lines of math that you 
did that you didn't have to do. Um, so it's not that bad. But the more comfortable you are with these, the faster uh, you can do these. All right. So anyway, I looked at the whole free body diagram. I saw for GY is 7,500. And then I cut through here. And then the ones that I cut through, I replaced them with their forces. And then I draw that free body diagram of that section and some of the forces in x equals zero, some of the forces in y equals zero, some of the moments equals zero. Some of the moments equals zero. Okay, now, I could have kept this half of it right here, right? I could have kept this half of it right here and drawn my three forces right there and maybe double check me, but you would have gotten the exact same three answers. You got 2,500 in compression, 7,500 in compression, and 7,500 in tension. That's the beauty of it. And it's really Newton's third law, equal and opposite. Th this half of the section feels this. This half of the fifth section feels equal and opposite. And because the way we write it as compression or tension, we're going to get the same answers. That's why we don't write it as left or right. Because if you look at the you know right section, your force might be left, but if I look at the left section, my force might be right. Uh, we write those as the magnitude and in parentheses indicate whether they are in tension or compression. That was a good problem. That was a good problem, right? Let's do some more.